So, we are discussing this problem uh, in our previous class, whether the starting of the problem was like this. So, fixed beam load placed little bit away from the center. So, the load bending moment at the two end force bending moment separately we have applied. Then due to the load the slopes we have written and due to your M A M B we wrote the expression of slope at the two end. So, next part is just we have to match the slope because slope here and slope here it should compensate because it is a fixed support and here also same thing. So, we can write uh, theta a due to p should be theta a due to moment and theta a due to p and theta a due to moment the expressions whatever we have written. So, if we just write it on the left side uh, it will be your m a l 3 e i m b 6 e i that was p a b a 2 b divided by 6 l e i. So, definitely this part is on the left side the other part on the left part here this is on the right side. So, similarly at B uh, due to the load and theta B due to the moment if we equate and uh, if we write here. So, it will be M A L divided by 6 E I M B L by 3 E I that is equal to P A B 2 a b 6 l e i right. So, here it is a plus 2 b at 2 b plus a here it is 3 it is 6 it is 6 it is 3. So, these are the two equations and two unknowns m a m b m a m b. Now, we have to just process this two equation and find out m a and m b. Now, the lower equation if we multiply with 2, so uh, or uh, this 6 will be 3 and m a part it we can cancel. So, this equation we can write uh, we can uh, straight away multiply or we can write in a uh, separate line. So, it will be m a l by 3 e i 2 m b l by 3 e i it will be 2 p a b 2 a b divided by 6 l e i right. Now, if we uh, just subtract that equation. Uh, or from this equation, this equation if we make it minus. So, your m a l by 3 e i part will be cancelled and here uh, m b part will be remaining right. So, uh, if I come to the next page say uh, this is your if I say this is your equation 1 if we say it is equation 2. So, if we make equation 2 minus equation 1. So, it is equation 2 minus equation 1 if we write. So, this m a l by 3 e i m a l by 3 e i that part will be cancelled and here it will be 2 m b l by 3 e i minus 
एम बी एल वाई सिक्स सी आई हियर योर टू पी ए बी टू ए प्लस बी डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स एल ई आई माइनस पी ए बी ए प्लस ट्वाइस बी सिक्स एल ई आई राइट सो स्ट्रेट वे वी जस्ट पुट द एक्सप्रेशन राइट नाउ देर आर सम कॉमन क्वान्टिटी दैट विल कन्सिडर इन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सो हियर इट इज थ्री आई सिक्स आई वी कैन जस्ट टेक सिक्स आई बिलो एंड इट विल हाउ मच सो हियर इट विल फोर फोर माइनस दिस साइड विल वन सो फोर माइनस विल इट विल थ्री एंड थ्री डिनोमीटर विल सिक्स सो इट विल हाफ सो वी कैन राइट से वी आर राइटिंग एम बी एम बी एल डिवाइडेड बाई टू आई राइट वी टेक कॉमन सिक्स सो हियर इट विल फोर माइनस वन थ्री थ्री सिक्स सो इट विल सिंप्लीफाई यू शुड गेट दैट एंड हियर डिनोमीटर सिक्स एल ई आई सिक्स एल ई आई कॉमन पी ए बी पी ए बी कॉमन सो हियर द इंटरनल पार्ट यू हैव टू एडजस्ट सो इट वी पी ए बी डिवाइड बाई सिक्स एल ई आई सो टू इफ यू पुट इन साइड इट विल बी फोर ए हियर माइनस ए सो इट विल बी थ्री ए एंड इट विल बी टू बी माइनस टू बी सो इट विल कैंसिल सो इट विल बी थ्री इट विल बी थ्री ए राइट सो वी कैन फुट इट ए इन टू ए इट विल बी ए स्क्वायर एंड दिस थ्री वी कैन कैंसिल वी कैन मेक इट टू राइट सो योर एम बी इट विल बी पी स्क्वायर बी टू टू कैंसिल या विल बी कैंसिल देर विल बी वन एल so it will be l square so it will be mb will be p a square b by l square unit also you can check because a square l square unit will more or less cancel and p into b so force distance so it should be mb now this mb if you put in any one of the equation equation 2 or equation 1 or again you just uh rearrange equation 1 and 2 cancel mb you will get ma and ma if you calculate you can check it so it will be simply ma it will be p a b l square the square of a square will be shifted to b square right so that part you agree with me uh and if you have some doubt you can check it. Rather, you should check it. It will be a good exercise. So, M A will be P A B square by L square. So, square will be also there. Now, if the A and B they are identical, it should be equal to L by two. So, if A equal to B equal to L by two, in that case, your M A will be M B. And it will be B will be equal, so it will be A Q. You can say, or you can say it is B Q. So both the side it will be A Q B Q, or it is simply L Q divided by eight. So L Q denominator L it will cancel, so it will be P L square divided by eight. A B will be equal. So a square b will be a q. A q will be your l by two. So l q two 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 will be eight. So uh, q uh, this this will not be your uh, l square. It will be just l p l by eight. 
right because it will be l q l square l square will cancel it will be l so it should not be it will be p l by 8 right so power will not be 2 it will be 1 or you can write again your m a m b p l divided by 8 so force length moment divided by 8 this is one of the uh, very standard expression if there is a beam both end are fixed we sometimes uh, define that as a fixed beam so it is a problem of fixed beam means both the ends are fixed and there is a load at, at the center if it is acting so both the moment generated the support we say fixed end moments and this fixed end moment is pl by 8 under this condition. Now, if you take a fully distributed load in a similar way we can go ahead and the value you will get omega l square divided by 12 fixed end moments right. So, uh, some of the statically indeterminate problem having 1 degree of indeterminacy 2 degrees of indeterminacy we have handled now uh, these problems are basically your beam type of problem now let us come to a problem which is little bit different in look not a beam um, uh, so it is a little bit frame type so beam normally it is a straight member so frame definitely it will have some change in orientation now the next step if we take that type of problem say one of the most simple type of frame problem is like this right so there is a vertical member and there is one horizontal member see there is a load here uh, it is acting it is p so this length is l for simplicity say this is also l and the material is identical it is E cross section uh, your section properties are identical it is also I this is also I it is L it is L this part is fixed there is a ruler support this side there is a load it is L and that is L ok. So, uh, you just think in that manner there is a bar. So, we have tried to change its orientation just so it was straight now it is like that. So, it is going like this now changing its orientation ok. So, it is not just connected by means of a pin. So, it is same member. So, here the connection is a fixed type of connection. We say it is a rigid type of connection. Here the idea is uh, the angle initially it is 90 degree. If there is a rotation of this member horizontal uh, vertical member, the horizontal member will rotate by the same angle. So, their relative angle it will be unaffected or unchanged. So, whole thing will rotate by same amount we say it is a rigid, rigid joint normally any structural joint uh, we get some plate some welding some riveting so it is a solid type of connections 
and as a whole it will try to rotate in a similar manner so we define it is a rigid type of joint so here there is a member so there is no uh, discontinuity there there is no a, a pin type of connection so that it can easily rotate so it can't play and change their relative angle so the angle would be identical and that type of problem we say it is a uh, typical frame problem right so frame and beam basic difference is beam members are all in line frame uh, the orientation may be different so frame we can say it is a three dimensional frame two dimensional frame so if we take a frame uh, three dimensional means member may be vertical horizontal it may go to this side it may go to incline and direction so it will be a total three dimensional general type of frame so here at least members are in the plane we can say it is a plane frame or two dimensional frame and this joint is a rigid type of joint and there is a load we want to find out the stresses, bending moment, shear force, everything of that particular frame. Now, first of all, this is a uh, fixed support. So, we have three reaction components plus there is a roller and this roller will have one reaction. So, basically one extra unknown is there. If the roller is not there, so due to this load, it should behave as a cantilever and this end was just ex extra. Okay, so, it is a fixed one, something is connected, there is a load, it should undergo some bending, the vertical member, horizontal member should be just there as an attachment. But here, uh, it will try to bend and when it will try to bend, horizontal member will try to follow that, follow that means it will try to move in the right side, that is allowed, but here there will be some slope, this member when it will bend there will be a slope at the end and this member it will follow that slope means this end will try to come down for this member. When it will try to come down automatically the reactor, reactive force will be generated right. So, in the form of physical uh, deform uh, uh, if you think in a physical way the deformation of the structure. So, it will try to come down some reaction will be generated or other way you can think there is a force. Uh, there will be a reaction force and this reaction force will make generate some moment and that moment some part will be taken care by the support and some part because there will be equal and opposite reactions and that part will take care the remaining part of the moment. So, whole problem is the force system is integrated inside you can't say this will be this one or other part will be zero so everything will be associated now the main difficulty here it is a statically indeterminate problem and uh, any one of the component you can take as a additional unknown and that part you can find out from the deformation of the structure now one of the simplest way is this roller part you can remove and put a reactive force and that reactive force you can find out from the deformation of that point because it is a support at least vertical deformation will be 0. Now, if we say if it is A and if it is B, if it is C, now that problem can be drawn in that manner. So, I am just putting with a line diagram not giving the thickness of that. So, there will be a P and there will be a reaction R C. Okay. So, this is just represented in that manner. So, here it is fixed, there is a P, there is R C and R C this force is not known. If that is known, we can find out everything because it is this end is now free end ok. So, it is just a cantilever only it is changing its direction ok. Now, this part of a problem is basically uh, two forces are acting one is P another is R C. So, effect of P and R C 
uh, we can handle in a different manner and we can uh, try to compare the deflection at this end and it should be equal to 0 because here there is a support right. So, this two part if we take separately this is P and here if we add now our basic problem was like this this is a P and R C this is clamped it is free end now that is only P and R C in two steps. Now, if we apply phi, what will be happening? Only this vertical member will have a cantilever mode of deformation. So, I can draw it in a different color. So, it will be like this. And this member it will come like that. So, here due to this P, uh, there will be a horizontal displacement plus a rotation and that rotation we know that rotation is simply P L by 2 E i. So, that slope will be this slope, right, this slope and this slope will be identical because initially it was 90 degree, it will be 90 degree. So, whole thing will be rotated, vertical member will have a rotation about vertical axis and same angle will be produced by the horizontal member, right. So, this angle and this angle is basically your theta b and it is your p l by 2 I think it is P L square, right? Not P L square. Right. So P into L into L half of that. It will be P L square by E i that will be the theta B theta B. So this end will undergo a vertical deformation. That is your delta uh, due to your P theta b it is basically due to p and delta p will be how much so this angle multiplied by length right because the horizontal vertical both the member are having the same length so this part should be equal to your p l q divided by 2 e i p l square by 2 e i is the slope so slope into length, slope into length will be the vertical deformation. Right. So, it is a vertical member, there is a load. So, this end will have a rotation of theta b due to p, we have defining is theta b p, p l square by 2 i and the horizontal member it will just follow that angle. So, slope into l will be the vertical deformation. So, it will be P L Q by 2 E i. Uh, slope is 2, deflection is 3. So, here the deflection will be P L Q by 3 e i, here to here and this slope is P L square by 2 e i, the slope into that length. Now, the next case, next case uh, this force it will give a cantilever type of deformation of this member. Uh, if we assume this is rigid, means there is no deformability of the vertical member, 
So, there will be a cantilever deformation. Now, second level, if we take the deformability of that, so, so this force will be transmitted here plus there is a moment. So, there is a moment, that moment will give the cantilever deformation of the vertical member. So, both the deformation will be combined together and we will get the final deformation here. So, here deformation will be upward, here it will be downward and ultimately it will match. Okay. Now, the cantilever deformation of the vertical member, it will be more or less like this. Okay. So, if we take this is a rigid member, so RC, if we cut here, so here we will get a force RC upward plus there is a moment and due to that moment, there will be cantilever of moment. Right. Now, if we take this is, this part is not under deformation. So, here uh, there will be a slope or about this there will be a slope. So, this slope will be equal to this slope, right. And what will be that slope? Th that slope we, we can say it is theta at B due to say that reaction. And that reaction that, that reaction will be this R C into L that will be the moment that moment will generate some slope. So, moment is uh, your uh, it will be ok let me rewrite here. This will be equal to your RC into L that will be the moment. So, it will be if there is a moment there, so it will be slope will be how much ML by A. If there is a cantilever, if there is a moment, so entire beam will have a uniform moment. So, M by A diagram will be M by A. So, area will be ML by A. So, it will be M L divided by E i, that will be the theta here, this angle, this angle. And if that is the angle, so this upward displacement will be how much? That into L. So, this value say uh, uh, it will be say delta. Um, it we have written in, in terms of P that will be in terms of R and say it is one one part. We have not taken the deformation of that member. So, this part will be this R C already L L it will be L Q divided by E i. Right. Now, if we add the deformation of the member here. So, you uh, try to get the two deformation. First of all, say this part is not uh, under deformation say assume for the timing it is rigid. So, this R will be shifted here in the form of axial force plus a rotation uh, axial force plus a moment. So, moment will be R c into L. So, uh, if there is a cantilever subjected to a moment, so slope produced will be ML by E i. So, M here it will be R c into L or R c L square by E i will be the slope here. That slope into distance that will be R, R c L, L into L, L square into L, L cube divided by E i that will be delta R for this moment component. Now, it, if it is rigid it will be like this a straight line, but it is not rigid. It, it has also flexibility. Now, here to here this load it will give a cantilever type of deformation. 
so that is delta r dash and this delta r dash this part will be just your rc uh, uh, i think it is lq divided by 3 i right so delta r will be delta r dash plus delta r double dash right so we can write here um, delta r now delta r dash already we have written it is rc uh, lq divided by ei and here this part rc lq divided by 3a right now if we add that this will give a uh, so this rc lq by ei so one third so it will be 4 rc lq 3 ei right so this delta is a total delta r so delta r it is upward and delta p it is downward so delta p is due to p and delta r due to rc so both the deformation should be same and it should be because it will be equal and opposite cancel each other so this value and this value we can just uh, compare and from there we will get the value of the reactive force now in the next step so if we take this data and try to match your delta p and your delta r so your delta p should be equal to delta r and delta p we have written here it is p lq 2 ei so it is equal to 4 rc lq divided by 3 ei so rc part we can write here 3 it will go there so it will be uh, 3 divided by 8 ei will cancel uh, it, so it will be just p If I show you the actual problem, so P if we apply there will be a reaction of 3 8 of the P. Now if there is 3 8 of the P, there will be a force downward to balance this and this two will give a moment and P there will be a reactive force here automatically if you calculate all the moments that will be the moment here or we can say if you start from there there is a reaction force you can calculate bending moment at any point so rc into l that will be the moment here that is this way and if you follow that direction minus p into x some reverse way moment will be uh, starting generated from this end and here there will be a moment it should match with the support moment generated at A. So bending moment anywhere you can find out, shear force also you can find out because shear force is this force RC RC here and here it will be only P but there will be axial force also in the system because this reaction here it will generate axial force RC part because there will be a reaction so there will be some member this member there will be no axial force because there is no resistance in that end so anywhere if you cut there will be no axial force but the vertical member some axial force will be there so normally in a frame problem we get bending moment shear force and axial force and deformation normal beam problem we get shear force bending moment and we get deformation deflection and slope but when it is a frame problem 
in a three dimensional two dimensional manner so any point may undergo a horizontal movement vertical movement as well as a rotation so beam there is no horizontal movement but here there is a horizontal movement there is a vertical movement plus rotation so there are three displacement components plus there are three force component bending moment shear force axial force beam it is only bending moment shear force and two displacement component displacement vertical displacement plus rotation right so uh, we have tried to change our problem a little bit from beam uh, earlier mostly we have handled beam type of problem in uh, handling a determinant problem through differential equation technique or moment area method normally beam type of problem we have handled here also at the beginning we have taken all beam so this is one of the case where we are going to take a frame type of problem now in a real case you will not get everything beam if we take any problem say wave frame is also a frame wave frame at least you have the idea okay. or any framing system it will have some horizontal component some vertical component maybe some inclined component so it will be basically a, a structural system where there is no guarantee that all the member will be like a beam beam we take because that is a very simple type of problem to explain the basic understanding but actual system it will be a frame most simple case it, it will be a plane frame much more complicated case it will be a space frame three dimensional frame right now uh, this period and last period we are more or less trying to handle a problem statically indeterminate type of structure and we have seen the number of reactive force are more and we are trying to uh, utilize the deformation of the structure and whatever understanding we had for the deformation of beam under simple cases a cantilever a simply supported case a load fully distributed load or a point load at the end or the middle we are trying to get standard relations to uh, get the overall deformation of the structure from there we are trying to manipulate deformation due to this force deformation due to the reaction try to compare from there the reactive force we are trying to find out now the activity whatever we have done here okay, with two members now you try to think if we add another member here or if there is an inclined member so whole problem will be much more complicated because the effect of reaction so it is shifted in two manner so deformation of that plus it is shifted in the form of moment then uh, some slope slope will be reflected in the form of displacement so if you go on adding the members it will be very difficult to handle in that manner right so we have to theoretically speaking uh, uh, we are talking about different methods and we can think okay with one method I can solve everything theoretically you can solve everything but it will be very very uh, difficult job to solve everything with a single method so depending on the problem some method may be much more suitable and we are supposed to take that type of method because it will be much more convenient to handle that type of problem with this typical uh, method or technique um, now in that respect if we try to handle little complicated problem uh, a frame type of problem or beam little bit more and if we do not want to remember all this PLQ divided by 3i and all those there is one technique called energy method and energy method is a very very uh, powerful method in many cases we try to use that energy method and try to get the deformation of the structure because statically indeterminate problem means you have to handle the deformation of the structure so uh, this part i have clarified earlier also uh, in some cases we want to know what is the deformation at that point but that type of requirement is not very frequent rather we are 
much more interested for finding out the bending moment shear force stresses. But statically indeterminate problem, we cannot find out the bending moment shear force unless we get the reactions. To handle that, we have to apply the knowledge of deformation of the structure. So, that was the basic reason for going through the deformation of the structure. Indeterminate form, then we just utilize that for finding out the reaction for indeterminate type of case. Now, I want to take the energy method. Energy method is much more useful, much more uh, uh, rather suitable for handling a, a little different type of problem, a little complex type of problem. And there uh, one thing uh, it may be beneficial for you that you need not remember all these standard expressions. So, you have to just write down the expression of the bending moment for the different segment. You have to perform some integration there. You have to get the energy expression, you have to take the derivative from there, you can get the def def deflection slope at different places. So, our next job we can start energy method, uh, but first we will try to apply with a statically determined type of, de determined type of structure but we have some understanding which we can handle easily. So, once that understanding will be there, that problem can be extended to a statically indeterminate type of case. Right. Now, this energy method is our next objective. Right. Now, what is this energy? Basically, here uh, we will be handling strain energy. Right. Now, what is strain energy? So, let us uh, discuss little bit very uh, basic component of energy. Now, I can take a simple bar. I am sure you have the idea of that. If we apply P, if the length is L, area is A, material property is E. So, there will be a elongation of that member, that elongation will be P L by A E. So, this is P, this is L by A E, that will be the elongation. Right. Now, this load P, uh, if we apply from 0 and gradually if we increase. So, it is starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that if we increase. So, delta initially it will be 0, gradually it will increase. So, if we plot the relationship between P and delta. So, P is load, delta is the deflection, Do load deflection curve. For a linear system, we are supposed to get a relationship like this. So, this side is P and this side is delta, right. So, if P equal to 0, delta will be equal to 0. So, you increase the load, delta will increase because L, A, E, these are fixed parameters. So, just go on increasing the load, it will follow a line. So, at any instant, say that is a P and under this load P, the deflection is delta. Now, if I slightly increase that load from P to delta P, so our delta will have a little change of d delta, right. So, here say it is a uh, d delta. And here also it is d p. So, here to here it is p, it is d p and here delta it is d delta. So, under p deflection was delta. So, if I just increase little bit, so there will be a slight change in deflection. So, there p will do some work. 
So, at the end there is a P. So, if we slightly increase this end will slightly shift by d delta. So, what will be the small work? That d work we can say that small incremental work it will be p into your d delta. P is already there, delta is already there. So, there is a further movement. So, this further movement is uh, p is the force and d delta is the movement. So, that will be the work and this p d delta is nothing but the area of this particular strip because it is d delta and that part is p. Now, you can say uh, this point is p, this point is not p, it is p plus d p. So, uh, which one we should take? Uh, someone may suggest we should take the average one p plus d p divided p plus p plus d p divided by 2. So, it will be p plus d p by 2, but this d p uh, normally we take this incremental concept in a very limiting manner means they will try 10 to 0. So, compared to p this d p or d p plus d p by 2 will be a very small quantity. So, if it is take 100 and 100.00005 or 1. So, that 00001 that part we can drop right. So, it is in an incremental manner more or less it's a area, area under the curve. So, what we do we take a strip. So, y into dx. So, y this end and that end there is a difference, but we, we think in a limiting manner that is tending to a point. So, it is also like this there is a p and there is a d delta. Now, if we just increase by another small amount, there will be another strip, another strip like this or if we start working from the beginning, there will be a number of strips like this. So, that will be basically our work. So, it is the total work, it will be half p into delta. So, at any p deflection is delta it will be half p into delta because this is p and this is delta this is the triangular part will be half of that. Usually we can think the load is p and deflection is delta. So, what should be p into delta? So, it is not like this because p it is not applied uh, from the beginning its full value. It is starting from 0 say p is 10 and delta is 2. So, 10 it is not applied at the beginning. So, it is starting from 0 to 10. So, average value is 5 and that average value uh, the displacement we are getting 5. So, we can say 10 into that value displacement divided by 2. So, half means we are basically averaging it because it is following a line. So, here it is a line if we take a, a nonlinear curve basically area under that curve will be the total work and that work will be stored in the form of energy and uh, that energy will store in straining the member. So, we say it is strain energy and if we release that loads that strain energy will be released. So, it will help to bring back to the original level. So, this part we say it is U or strain energy right. So, u this total work we are defining as u and this is called strain energy right. So, if there is a load there is a uh, deflection p delta half will be the energy because the load will act gradually from a 0 value to a certain value. Now, we can uh, make an argument that who is going to put the load in a very slow manner in a gradual manner. So, we just put there suddenly applied load. Now, if there is a beam suddenly if you apply a load. So, whole problem will be a dynamic problem. So, if there is a beam you put the load there. So, what will be happening? Suddenly, there will be a force and there will be no deformation. So, some uh, equilibrium will not be uh, maintained 
automatically some motion will be initiated. So, it will come to the equilibrium, then some velocity will be there. So, it will cross that limit, go beyond that. After that, it will come to rest, but at that level equilibrium is violated. Again, it will start come back. So, some vibration will be there in the system. Now, due to the damping and all those, ultimately it will die out, come to the static stage. But external loading you may apply suddenly, but internal stresses it will generate gradually. Any structure, if you put the load suddenly, stress will not be generated from 0 to 10 suddenly. So, it will gradually take, if it is a static problem, dynamic problem, we are trying to put this energy P is the load and delta is the elongation. Actually, this is the external phenomena that 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 work will be stored in the form of strain energy inside. Now, let us write in that manner say u is equal to half p into delta right. So, this part it is written in this manner say half p by a delta by l a into l. Right. So, it will be we can write half sigma epsilon into volume. Right. P delta P we have divided by A, we are getting stress delta divided by L is the strain. So, A and L unnecessarily we have taken at the denominator, numerator we have to compensate that. So, A into L is basically volume. So, half stress strain into volume that will be the total energy or this half into sigma into epsilon that is called is the that is called as strain energy density means strain energy per unit volume. So, multiplied by the volume will be the total energy right. So, in a general case we can write u is equal to half sigma dv integral. So, this is a problem where stress and strain are uniform throughout. So, we are simply taking it is half sigma epsilon into V, but sigma epsilon may vary point to point. So, in a general case we can say it is sigma epsilon dV. So, it will be general integral and this part we say it is intensity of the strain energy and a whole part is the strain energy. Right. Uh, so, I think we can uh, drop it here, uh, just we have initiated the strain energy in the form of simple extension of a bar, that idea will be much more generalized and it will be applied to a structural problem in the subsequent classes. means uh, just we have started talking on this. Uh, um, uh, the technique is energy method, it is based on basically the uh, concept of strain energy. The strain energy we are trying to explain in with the form of a simple bar problem under tension, right. So, we took a bar in that form and apply the load P. Now, this is a case of a very uh, simple stress problem because entire bar will have identical stress and strain. So, anyhow stress is P by A and strain will be your uh, total elongation divided by length of the member. So, it is a case of uniform strain, uniform stress whatever you can say. Now, the elongation we wrote in the last class it was P L by A E and we have drawn a curve like this your load versus elongation straight line because whole thing is a linear system and for any load 
if you start applying load from 0 gradually increase go up to a load P, that elongation will increase from 0 to delta and the area under this load deflection curve uh, uh, we have found that it is basically the work carried out the force P. Now, it is not straight away P and delta because P is not constant throughout because P is starting from 0 to that P and it is delta is starting from 0 to delta. So, total work so that we have put in the form of half P into delta. Right. So, that work it will be stored in the form of some energy we say it is strain energy that strain energy will be equal to this work done half P into delta. Now, here uh, load why we are putting in a gradual manner because we want to maintain the static condition. If we apply suddenly load whole thing will be a dynamic problem. So, that will be much more difficult case. So, we want to understand with a very simple type of problem. So, load in a static manner if we want to apply we have to apply gradually. So, always there will be balance between internal and external force system. Basically this strain energy though it is expressed in the form of P into delta it is rather the uh, measure of some internal quantities. Internal quantities means uh, there will be deformation that we define in the form of strain and due to the strain some stress will be there. So, whole thing is uh, a measure of the strain and stress inside and you must have remember we have written this one as this sigma epsilon into V because that P we have divided by area epsilon divided by L. So, it became stress, it became strain and this L and A it becomes V that is the volume or sometimes we write it is U 0 V. So, U 0 is this part, we sometimes say it is strain energy density right. So, half stress into strain is the stress, strain energy density multiplied by the volume will be the total energy. Now, this is a case of uniform stress and strain. Uh, so, everywhere your sigma and epsilon is constant. For a general case, we have written uh, u equal to your half sigma.